Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Space Quest 6, The Spinal Frontier. We've just been kidnapped by this guy and his, um, larger red buddy. So let's see what kind of contrived sequence of events we need to do to get out of it. And the first thing that caught my eye is this key up here on this nail. Hey, what the fu- I don't want to see you move another inch or I'm going to slice you into nice little bite-sized pieces. Now, can it? You are now a proud nail owner. Okay, the good old-fashioned grab a nail and pick the lock on your handcuffs trick. Good thinking. The nail proves to be just what you needed to free yourself from those handcuffs. Don't get all excited, little Red Riding Hood. You aren't out of those woods yet. The lock on those handcuffs is rather simple. Due to the planetary location of this unit, it can't keep a steady picture for very long. And, as is universally known, the local cable company will get around to fixing it at their convenience. And who knows, you might get lucky and get another shopping channel or country western station in the process. This alien woman looks to be in very bad shape. Her pupils are fixed and dilated. Her body is stiff, almost as if she's dead. And her skin looks tight and puffy, as if bodily gases are building up inside her. Bandages and patches appear in profusion all over her, and some of her seams look like they're about to give way. You make a mental note to come back and rescue this poor woman. Yeah, or we'll get our friend Leisure Suit Larry to do that later. Teddy Schmuckspin, a popular children's toy, sits on the floor. If you weren't a popular child, you didn't get one. Now, this guy will nail us if we bother him too much, but there's a contrived sequence of events to get him to go away. Of course. Don't even bother looking in your pot. Don't even, don't even bother. We have this Elvis. It's stuff. that static laden cheapo polystyrene static. rug you ripped from the wall. You carefully lay the rug on the floor. Even though you were never known for your interior decorating talents, you feel very satisfied with the location you have chosen. is now carrying a nice static charge. It looks like a plug receptor. Okay, one of the reasons they a lot of older technologies aren't hot pluggable, can't plug them in while the computer's turned on, is because they don't handle static real well. Wow, the static energy you built up discharged, frying Lard Boy's circuitry. Did you actually think of that, or was it just luck? Yeah, so I'm using a walkthrough to get through this thing because I'm not that familiar with this game. You now possess the Mahdi. A Mahdi? We just have to best about that. You won't, be you won't be needing any empty cans. A gas mask won't help you in this game. With the data quarterback that we had from the um, Android Hunter. The desk field. That's delight. Your search through the CDs reveals a bunch of typically boring multimedia magazines. A multimedia. The outpost. Pro Successful people managing techniques by Carm Trebus. Funny. It's empty. Sure, that's a reference. MF to DOS for idiots, morons, and feebs. 
Touring Xenon on five buckazoids a day. Not powered in Space Quest 12. Discovering your inner maggot. That's not insane. How to become a sign to being a corporate creative genius without really trying. Hmm, this might be worth checking out. It's a copy of popular Tektronics. You should have paid attention the first time. This game's budget is way too small to allow me to list all those titles over again. You should have... Sorry I missed a few of those, but, um... There's a lot of stuff to look at, and it does eventually get drag... does eventually drag on. Alright, um, and here's another thing that drags on is the amount of text in this thing here. So I'm going to read this first section here. Yes, you, uh, from data quarter to homing beacon, fast. Yes, you too can make a homing beacon from simple household goods. Chief among the devices you can use is the data quarter, which, with a few adjustments, sends in a powerful signal to potential rescuers who could be light years away. First, open your data quarter. Inside you'll find chips, ERC settings, and plates. If you correctly alter these settings, you'll be soon be home by fire by the fire with a cup of nog. Of course, any mistakes could result in a barbecue if you was the answer, but let's not worry about that. We'll describe the details in the next issue. All right, and that's all we really need here. If we look at this data quarter. This is the data. And open this it up. Button Why it defaults to eyes when you come into this screen, I have no idea. I don't want to ever look at the thing. I want to tinker with the thing. We see there's a bunch of components in here. And we can take them apart and separate these little chips from the green plates. And then there are IRK settings. Okay. If you ever had a computer back in the pre-plug-and-play era, when IBM compatible, which is prior to the mid-1990s, if you wanted to add a new component to your computer, you had to configure the IRQ settings, interrupt requests, and ensure that each device in the computer had its own IRQ address that was or IRQ line that was not shared with any other devices because of the way IRQs are handled by the system. And I'm not going to get into the details there, but it would make your computer quite unstable. So let's take a look at these things here. This is the Dentium chip. This is the Repentium chip. This is the Fermentium chip. This is the Dimtel chip. This is the Spentium chip. All of these are similar to the Intel Pentium, except for this one, which is similar to Intel. This is the Tachyon transmitter plate, hence the awesome TT moniker. This is the particle shield plate, hence the helpful PS appellation. Somebody got a thesaurus for Christmas. This is the subspace emitter plate. Hence the handy SE abbreviation. This is the recalibrating fluctuator plate. Hence the always lovely RF tag. This is the feedback cutter offer plate. Hence the clever FC label. Okay. This is one of the goof-ups that Space Quest 6 has. Like we said in the last video, last series for Space Quest 5, Mark Pro and... Mark Pro and Scott Murphy split up after Space Quest 4, and Mark Pro did Space Quest 5. Um, Josh Mandel, back at Sierra, started work on Space Quest 6, and due to internal politics, eventually had to leave the project. And Scott Murphy was asked to come in and finish creating Space Quest 6. 
sometime between the time they completed the game and the time they went to market with the game, Josh and Scott sat down and had lunch or something, and they asked, so did you find a use for that comic strip we made? And like, what comic strip? And they couldn't figure out where to put it in the game. Right, that popular Tektronics disc we saw in their in the um, bad guy's computer there referred us to a book called Sanitation Hotspot, and this is actually one of the feelies included in the game. Popular Janitronics, the magazine of space-based sanitation engineering. And this is available online. I'm not going to read it. Um, but there's a little bit of a um, thing to um, call it a little bit of a travel guide to Poly Sorbate 60. And it seems like this little thing is the entire planet. And this is the actual solution, or the actual clues, to the, um, what we're supposed to do here and build a, build a, uh, what's it called? A homing beacon into our data. And if you've ever had these logic puzzles where they give you two or three different attributes of things, or actually probably three or four or five different attributes of things, and they tell you what combinations don't work, and you're supposed to be able to narrow it down to find the combinations that do work. And here's more hints down on this other page here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the solution guide to this in a separate video, and we'll just go on from here. That might go up after the video, after the series happens. Or it might be at the end of, or it might be the next video in the series, I'm not sure. And I'm going to use my walkthrough just to go to the right answer here. So we're going to take this thing apart. And the first thing I need is the RF plate on the top, and then I need the TT plate, and then the PS, and then the FC, and then the SE. Then, and this is really hard to read on the modern display, when this is full screen on a 14-inch CRT back in the day. I need the Spentium chip in the top plate. I need the Dentium in the next. Then the Fermentium. The Repentium. And the Dentium. seems to be something stopping the data quarter from transmitting. All right, so we have our homing beacon set up here. We got, we need to search this guy here for the keys. Smooth move, you've got his key ring. That's the desk feels need to do. you won't be needing. Well, 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 the worm is out of the hole. So, you have to ask yourself do I feel lucky? Well, do I punk? Alright, 
we can get rid of this guy some. Let's go through his things. He won't. The room care. seems to be vibrating ever so slightly. The telltale residue of a local damping field. Ah, that's why we can't trend. You rummage around in the box to look for something useful, but all you find is an almost complete set of line dancing in zero-G daddies. Only volume two, the achy breaky, appears to be missing. The room seems to be vib... You poke around and look for something useful, but since you're not exactly Mr. Subspace Neurotransmitter Repair Guy, none of it appeals to you. You poke and prod amongst the Mahdi's until you find... A Mahdi labeled Churlish. Being intrigued by the word, you glom it. Incidentally, you might want to look up the word Churlish before you do anything stupid. Churlish. Rude and mean-spirited in a... And sir, rude in a mean-spirited and surly way. What's the worst that can happen? Wow, he really creased your can. Pretty impressive. Maybe not from your point of view, of course. Space Quest 6 features the Try Again button, which rolls you back to right before you screwed up. This was a feature in some of the later Sierra games after they were getting um, flat for being too happy to kill your character off. For example, this see the earlier Space Quest games. Alright, so if we give him the Churlish Mahdi, he's going to smack us. We also have this Burlesque Mahdi. That might be entertaining in a revolting kind of way. Excellent guess, Kreskin. Wrong, but excellent. As cool... Boy would... Boy would... But he's disinterested in such a thing. The corner of the label in this Mahdi seems to be loose. So if we peel the label off and put the Churlish label on the Burlesque Mahdi... Alright... And, yeah, you've been warned. Thinking it was the churlish Muddy, he pops it in place. Still don't think Scum VM's MIDI support is quite right because it left a note hanging in my sound canvas here. To reboot the synthesizer. So let's see. Luckily, there's no sound fonts in this one or system exclusive patches that the canvas uses. Okay. The room seems to be. The room. Don't. The room seems. It feels. Unfortunately, there is nothing wrong with a subspace neurotransmitter control controller. Do not attempt to adjust the controller. We are controlling transmission. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can change your mind to a soft blur or sharpen it to crystal clarity. I'm sure that's a song somewhere. He was supposed to drop... There it is. A belt containing certain items. As cool. I think he throws the belt away, but we have this control box here. And that turns off the force field. I think that's everything we need from here. Let's step outside. And then we tinker with the data paper. And the homing beacon kicks in. Hey! Here's your fish! Stella, you picked up my homing signal. I, I can't believe I actually made it work. 
Now no one can say I spent a little bit too much free time in the bathroom with Popular Tektronics. Popular Tektronics? Who are you trying to kid? I know what you were reading in there. What was that voice, Roger? I thought I heard something. Pay no attention, Stellar. It was probably just a mechanical flatulence from the ship. Anyway, we received a transmission from a nearby Starcon communications monitoring platform. They told us of some unusual signal originating from the area of polysorbate 60. We dialed it in, scanned the coordinates, and found you. So what are you doing in this sector, Stellar? I thought you were stationed on the SCS Heinz 57. I am. I had some leave accumulated and decided to take it. Uh, this is kind of embarrassing for me. I actually came to see you. I've been thinking about you a lot lately, and I was curious about what you'd been up to, so I decided to visit. And when I arrived here, I found you had just left for shore leave on polysorbate. I decided to follow you down and try and catch up with you. When I got to that dump of an inn and found you'd been kidnapped by those thugs, I searched around, but could find no trace of where they'd taken you. That certainly is a strange place. I decided to beam back up to the deep ship and try to locate you through your transport communicator signal. When I'd returned, I found you'd left it up here on the ship. I didn't know what to do then until that call came through from the Starcon installation. You're a lucky man, Wilco. Uh, yeah. I, I guess I am. If you hadn't gotten there when you did, I'd probably be a victim of some serious cement poisoning after those geeks chucked me off that balcony. Terrace. What? Well, actually, it was a terrace. Whatever. Thanks, Stellar. I sure owe you a big one. I'd sure like to collect that sometime. But let's talk about you and me. Perhaps I could take you to dinner sometime soon. I'd like that, Stella. I'd like that a lot. The thing is that I kind of have a kind of a relationship with another, and I wouldn't feel very comfortable about that. I mean, it, it wouldn't be fair to her. You understand? Not to mention the fact I'd be wearing my sphincter for a necklace if Beatrice ever found out. I hope you do understand, Stellar. I like you. I, I think I even more than like you. I, I don't know where I got this inordinate sense of loyalty toward Beatrice. I believe the word that explains that is fear. Pound sand, pal. Please know that were the situation any different, I'd be making that date with you right now. Oh, I see. Friends, co-workers, buddies. That's all this is gonna be. I guess I knew it somewhere inside. I just didn't want to believe it. I guess I admire your trueness of heart, however misplaced. But I feel much more inclined to damn you for it. I know that's selfish, but it's how I feel. I must admit it shows something more about you, more depth of character than I gave you credit for, Wilco. Well, I'm patient, if you ever have a change of heart. Well, Roger, uh, we should, uh, we should see what we can find out about those subhuman walking dumpsters that had such a keen interest in you. I don't suppose you heard their names. No, uh, but I did get this neat personal grooming assistant. It needs a little cleaning, but... That's great, Roger. Don't clean it, though. Take it to the sick bay. There's a DNA analyzer there. We can scan the contents and perhaps use the results to get some names and information about these guys. Good thinking, Stellar. I probably would have thought of it, eventually. Yeah, I'm sure you would have, Roger. Look, I've got to go to sick bay and get some treatment for my back after that not-so-graceful rescue. Oh, yeah, that. Uh, sorry. Well, uh, I'll see you there.
Commander, I am receiving a message from Starcon. Computer on screen. Hello, Commander Kilbasa. I have a new directive for Deep Ship 86. This is actually a special request from me, Commander. As you may know, I served with Admiral Blundfang during the Fallopian Campaign. Admiral Blundfang's widow is involved in building an off-world retirement community. They are almost finished, but have requested assistance from Deep Ship 86. Commander, please extend her every courtesy. You know, if things go well, this would not look too bad in your personnel file. I will let Sharpay, the Admiral's widow, explain further. Hello, Commander Kilbasa. As Admiral Toolman mentioned, we have almost completed our project here, but could use Starkhan assistance. To be honest, Commander, I pulled a few strings, but this is an important mission, I assure you. Since you are scheduled to be present for the dedication of the Golden Light Years Retirement Center anyway, I hoped you might alter your travel plans to accommodate an earlier arrival. From the information provided me by my old friend, the Admiral, you would be able to warp here within a few hours. I require some assistance from your ship, as well as one of your crew members. Allow me to explain. Meanwhile, back in sick bay. <laughs> All right, for that cutscene, I think we've run over our expected video time, so let's call it an episode here, and when we come back, we'll either be doing the data quarter puzzle, and show how to solve that thing, or we'll be continuing with more of Space Quest Six. so thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.